Hello there, Ludo Shooter fans. Dark Kask is here with some more of the first Descended news, and boy, oh boy, do we have a banger today. Before we get started, if you are into looter shooters and you want to learn more about the first descendant, make sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe for more. Right then, the developers just dropped their second dev talk and this time it's all about something most of you I'm sure have been waiting for. I'm obviously talking about Endgame. As we all know, completing the story campaign in any looter shooter is just the start of the journey. Because for theory crafters and build makers, the real fun only starts at endgame. Plus, a solid fun and rewarding endgame loop is essential for this genre of game to make it in the long run. First off, the devs come out and they dub this as an endless endgame. I know we all heard that one before, so let's get into it with a little bit more detail. They mentioned that in a game like this, the first step is to become a collector farming as many unique weapons and descendants as possible into your arsenal. This is for mastery ranking purposes, because the more weapons and descendants you level up, the more mastery you acquire. It becomes a very important game loop, because we know from the betas, your mastery rank is what limits how far you can improve your mods and how much capacity you will have to mod said weapons and descendants. In a somewhat similar way to Warframe, if you will. Thankfully, they also confirmed to us that all Descendants and Ultimate Weapons can be farmed and permanently acquired through regular gameplay. This is something we already kinda knew, but it's nice to have it reinforced in this developer chat. They also mentioned that Ultimate Weapons, on top of having higher base stats, have unique abilities. And those abilities can be upgraded using the Weapon Fusion System. Imagine for example the Valance Fusion System for Tenet and Kuva Weapons in Warframe, and you get the picture. Also, like in Warframe, some ultimate weapons pair better with certain descendants to achieve their full functionality and potential. They also very briefly tease that more ultimate weapons and descendants are on the way, but we kind of figured that out. Showing up on your screen right now at the top right should be the video I did showcasing and talking about these upcoming descendants, so feel free to check that one out for more. Then the developers move into a breakdown of what they call endgame mission types. First off, confirmation of a feature that many games of this genre neglect. Story replayability. Loads of looter shooters don't implement this feature, and the ones that do, most times forget about difficulty and reward scaling. The developers confirm that not only can you replay the story missions, they will have a harder difficulty mode that unlocks as you progress throughout the main story. Another win for story mission replays is that with a harder mission difficulty type also comes better rewards. On top of that, loot pools are not tied to specific missions and will in fact rotate between missions at regular intervals. This seems to be a great feature and should help avoid burnout because it means that you're not stuck in one mission forever to farm one specific item. At some point, that item drop you're looking for will move to another mission and you can carry on farming in a fresh mission type and location. Our next endgame mission type is called Infiltration. Infiltrations support matchmaking and allow you to add an extra layer of challenge using up to 5 modifiers before the start of a run. These range anywhere from decreasing your HP and defense stats to increasing the enemy's attack power and HP. Or hey, you can go nuts and select all 5 of them for an even higher skill score multiplier for a chance at better rewards. Next up, we have Special Operations. While other mission types are based on moving through a level with combat sections in between, the developers emphasize that Special Operations are based entirely on combat objectives. Examples of objectives being kill all enemies in an area, defend objects or positions, etc. Although basic and simple at first glance, these are mainly round-based missions. Each round introduces higher enemy density, increased enemy types and more elite spawns ramping up the challenge as the rounds progress, but also increasing drop rates for the higher tier rewards. These missions also support matchmaking and the developers encourage a stronger focus on team composition for optimal farming results. You can look at these as the endless type missions in Warframe, like defense, survival, etc. Every 7th round of a defense operation, for example, the player will have the option to extract and end the mission or continue towards the next round to try and get better rewards. Again, very similar to 5 rounds in a defense mission from Warframe. 
There are three distinct types of special operations in the First Ascendant at launch. These are Mind Blocking, Resource Defense and Neutralize Void Experiment. In Mind Blocking, you must defeat a set amount of enemies within a time limit. Mind Blocking has increased mob density, so we'll most likely be relying on Descendants with strong AoE capabilities for the faster clear times. You can very much look at these as your time trials. I'm sure speedrunners out there will get a kick out of posting the fastest times. Then we got Resource Defense. Your typical defense type mission where each wave of enemies will rush an objective with the intent of destroying it. Here it's up to you and your squad to come up with ways to prevent hordes of enemies from reaching and damaging the target. The last special operation is Neutralize Void Experiment. Which can we all agree we'll just simply call it Void Experiment from now on? Thank you. Again, next on with that AI translation. Anyway, in Void Experiments, players will have to split their time and focus between hunting and destroying special fleeing enemies, whilst controlling hordes of mobs that will constantly spawn in to mess up your progress. You can look at these fleeing enemies as being similar to the famous Loot Goblin archetype in other RPGs. To cap it all off, we have Void Intercept Battles. These are referred by the devs and I quote, one of the most exciting battle content that you can encounter in the first Descendant. Void Intercepts take place in dedicated instances and will test our Descendants against a variety of special boss encounters against the Mighty Colossus. There are many types of Colossus to beat in game, each with its own specific status resistances, weak points and breakable parts, which the player can target and build around to maximize damage. But more importantly, unique mechanics to overcome, and yes, those include one-shot mechanics and DPS checks. These missions reward you with higher tier materials and loot and have a reward mechanic on completion very similar to Relic Cracking in Warframe if you are familiar with that process. I am super excited to finally see the marketing ramping up for this game, especially with the presentation focused on Endgame. Every day we're a step closer to release and I cannot wait. Let me know in the comment section what did you think about this dev chat? What changes and improvements would you like to see to the end game of the first Descendant? Thank you very much for making it this far. Remember to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel for more looter shooter content. And hey, maybe check out the next video on our end card. Darkowska signing off. And until next time, hasta luego.